Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. We have a great show for you tonight. You can see Casper Leach right over my shoulder. Hey, Casper. And uh, beside me is Captain Kirk Reed, uh, infamous or famous cannabis food maker. Welcome, Captain. Thank you. Over to the side, we have Justin Bridges. He's just got his new album out, On My Way. Welcome, Justin. Thanks for having me. I know you want to come on tonight because it is show number 710. Do you want to explain to our audience? A lot of people know about the significance of the number 420. Uh, but there's a new number out there. You want to explain the significance of that briefly? I'll put yeah, you on the, the spot uh, here. The new, uh, the new number is 710, as you can see right here. And uh, 710, uh, all the dabbers out there know what it is. It's uh, referring to oil or a BHO or dabs. or. And so when you turn the 710 upside down, it spells, spells oil. oil. <laughs> okay. Yep. So this now you guys out there 17. know too. We have some interesting hip news stories, uh, some film clips, and uh, we will be back right after we bring on our infamous dancing cannabis leaves. I feel the force. U.S. Justice Department doesn't have a viable legal basis on which to challenge marijuana legalization laws in Colorado and Washington, according to Deputy Attorney General James Cole, uh, which he admitted last Sunday. He said it would be a very challenging lawsuit to bring uh, while testifying at the first congressional hearings on cannabis legalization in the two states, according to Jacob Sullum at uh, Forbes magazine, also of Reason.com. Cole said that simply repealing state penalties for growing, possessing, and selling marijuana does not create a positive conflict with the Uniform Controlled Substances Act. He argued that the feds would be on firmer legal ground if they tried to preempt state licensing and regulation of cannabis businesses, which are newly legal under state law. But the Deputy Attorney General said that approach would mean that if such litigation were successful, it would leave the industry unregulated. That's why the Department of Justice decided on the approach summarized in the memo Cole issued August 29th, limiting federal enforcement to cases that involve eight federal concerns, including sales to minors, drug driving, diversion of marijuana to other states. Cole said, quote, we've reserved quite explicitly the right to go in and preempt at a later date. Uh, he said, summarizing the DOJ's policies as trust but verify. This was a mess, according to Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, a Democrat from Rhode Island. He said at Sunday's hearing, White House welcomed Cole's memo as clarification of the Obama administration's inconsistent policy on medical marijuana, which started by assuring state legal suppliers they didn't have to worry about federal prosecution, followed by letters from U.S. attorneys who said complying with state law wouldn't protect anyone but patients. White House, Senator Whitehouse said, quote, as long as they're not violating any of the eight federal priorities, the federal government is not going to prosecute them. But if those eight priorities don't make for a viable prosecution, U.S. Attorney Cole added that other U.S. attorneys might decide to target state legal cannabis businesses for other unspecified reasons, as indicated in the last sentence of his memo, which went, quote, Nothing herein precludes investigation or prosecution, even in the absence of any one of the factors listed above, in particular circumstances where investigation and prosecution otherwise serves an important federal interest. End quote. The memo equivocates. Attorney General Cole claimed that the catch-all is not meant to swallow the entire memo, but 
The fact is that language leaves federal prosecutors with the leeway to prosecute almost anyone whom they wish, even in legal states. Causing additional concern is the fact that several U.S. attorneys in states with legal medical or recreational marijuana have already said the new federal directive will have no effect on their choice of whom to prosecute. Besides seeming to promise restraint on the part of federal prosecutors, Cole also said the Department of Justice is working with federal banking regulators to address banks' fears of working with marijuana businesses, which are forced to operate on a cash-only basis because financial institutions don't want to incur federal wrath by accepting their deposits. Assistant U.S. Attorney Cole said in response to a question from the Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Patrick Leahy, quote, we agree it is an issue we need to deal with. There is a public safety concern when businesses have a lot of cash lying around, end quote. Cole denied that the Drug Enforcement Administration had warned armored car services not to do business with cannabis sellers. He said, quote, the DEA was merely asking questions of the armored car companies as to what their practices are, Cole claimed, adding that the questions came before his memo. The Deputy Attorney General said the inability of marijuana businesses to deduct expenses on federal tax returns would have to be fixed by Congress through legislation. In Amsterdam, pop sensation Miley Cyrus fired up on stage. She lit a joint Sunday at the MTV European Music Awards in Amsterdam immediately after accepting the Best Music Video Award for Wrecking Ball, according to multiple press reports and pictures. Cyrus pulled out a cannabis joint and had a quick smoke on stage, according to Nadeska Alex at MTV News. Uh, she said she pulled a joint out of her purse, quote, I couldn't fit this award in my bag, but I did find this, so thank you guys very much. Uh, MTV censored the footage of Cyrus smoking weed when airing the M EMAs in the United States. Uh, according to uh, the Parents Television Council President Tim Winter, he said, quote, we applaud MTV for taking responsible action to eliminate the drug use from its U.S. broadcasts, and we urge them to make that a uniform policy for all of its programming, end quote. Winter had slammed MTV for Cyrus's twerking at the Video Music Awards back in August. Cyrus has been associated with cannabis use since her 19th birthday party in 2011, where she joked about being a stoner. She said, quote, I think weed is the best drug on earth, end quote. In a recent Rolling Stone interview, Miley Cyrus arrived in Amsterdam on Friday and spent much of the weekend hanging out at the Greenhouse Coffee Shop downtown with several other stars, according to reports in the Associated Press. In fact, we have a, a video clip we're going to be running with the founder of the Greenhouse Coffee Shop. I was on a panel with him in Spain uh, a couple months ago, so stay tuned for that. But Cyrus wore a pot leaf emblem in her earphones during the live performance of Wrecking Ball at the awards show on Sunday. From Boston, Massachusetts, an estimated one in six patients with IBD or inflammatory bowel disease report using cannabis therapeutically, according to survey data published in the journal Inflammatory Bowel Diseases. Researchers assessed survey responses from 292 IBD patients seeking treatment at the Brigham and Women's Hospital Crohn's and Colitis Center in Boston, Massachusetts. Investigators reported that over half of all respondents possessed firsthand experience with cannabis and that just over 16% had used it to mitigate symptoms of the disease. The uh, authors reported, quote, we found that approximately 16.4% of patients with IBD cared uh, for a tertiary referral center have used marijuana to treat their IBD symptoms since their diagnosis. We found that patients perceive that medical marijuana is helpful for treating abdominal pain, poor appetite, nausea associated with IBD, end quote. The authors also reported that at least one third of IBD patients would consider participating in a clinical trial to objectively assess the plant's therapeutic efficacy. Previous surveys from other countries have also reported elevated rates of cannabis use among populations with inflammatory bowel diseases such as ulcerative colitis, and Crohn's disease. According to clinical trial data published earlier this year in the journal Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology, 
Cannabis inhalation reduces symptoms of Crohn's disease compared to placebo in patients who have not yet been responsive to traditional therapies. Separate observational trial data report that Crohn's patients require fewer disease-related surgeries following their use of cannabis. According to a recent survey, overwhelmingly, Americans believe, almost two-thirds of them, that it's unacceptable for companies to fire employees for off-the-clock marijuana use in states where it's legal, according to new poll data from Huffington Post and New Government. That's the same percentage that said it would be unacceptable to fire employees for drinking during their off time, reports Emily Swanson at the Huffington Post. The new poll shows that 64% of Americans think that if marijuana were legal in their state, it would be unacceptable to fire an employee for using cannabis during his or her free time. Only 22% said it would be acceptable to dismiss them for toking off the job. That's identical to the percentage saying it would be unacceptable to fire an employee for drinking off the job, with 64% saying it would be acceptable. 22% saying uh, it would be unacceptable. How about in states where marijuana isn't legal yet? In that case, uh, when simply asked whether it would be unacceptable to fire an employee for smoking marijuana during off hours, not mentioning the legality of cannabis, 45% said it would be unacceptable, and 32% said it would be okay to fire them. Republican respondents were of the poll were most likely to base their answers on whether cannabis was legal, with 41% saying it would be just fine to fire an employee for using marijuana, compared to 32% who said it would not be acceptable. That changes big time if using marijuana is legal, with 62% of Republicans saying it would be unacceptable to fire an employee for uh, cannabis use off the job, 27% saying it would be okay to fire them. 51% of the respondents under age 30 said it would be unacceptable to fire employees for marijuana use, regardless of legality. In a situation where cannabis is legal, the majority of all respondents in all age categories said it would not be okay to fire someone for smoking cannabis. Most likely to say such a dismissal would be unacceptable was the 45 to 64 age group. Despite the unpopularity of firing employees for using legal cannabis off the job, courts have continued to uphold the practice, according to Paul Armentano at Alternet and National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. The Supreme Courts of California, Oregon, and Washington have all ruled that the legalization of medical cannabis on the state level doesn't prevent employers from firing workers for off-the-job use. Similar court challenges are still pending in other states, including Colorado and Michigan. This poll was conducted October 31st and November 1st among 1,000 U.S. adults selected to match demographics and other characteristics of the adult U.S. population. Last story tonight is out of the Netherlands. Subjects who consume cannabis for therapeutic purposes prefer herbal forms of the plant to pharmaceutically produced derivatives, according to the survey data published in the Journal of Psychoactive Drugs. Investigators from Canada, Germany, the Netherlands, and the United States conducted a web-based survey consisting of 21 structured questions to assess patients' perceptions of different types of cannabinoid-based medicinal products as well as their preferred modes of consumption. Over 950 subjects who took part in the survey, a majority of the survey participants reported that herbal cannabis preparations were more cost-effective and posed fewer side effects than cannabis-derived pharmaceuticals such as Marinol or Nabilone. Participants were also more likely to report greater satisfaction with inhaled, via either smoking or vaporizing, forms of cannabis products as compared to products that required oral dosing. According to the author's report, they said, quote, cannabis smoking closely followed by vaporizing scored highest for satisfaction with ease of dose titration, while oral use of cannabinoids scored lowest. This result may be because of rapid onset of the effects of inhaled cannabinoid use allows easier titration of dose, end quote. The investigators concluded, quote, in general, herbal gener non-pharmaceutical CBMs, or cannabinoid-based medicines, received higher appreciation scores from participants than pharmaceutical products containing cannabinoids. Our data suggests that overall, there's good satisfaction with whole plant preparations that are affordable and administered in an inhaled manner or in the form of a tincture, end quote. 
The full text of this study, The Medicinal Use of Cannabis and Cannabinoids, an International Cross-Sectional Survey on Administration Forms, appears in the Journal of Psychoactive Drugs. I'm going to jump back over. Justin Bridges, how are you, Justin? I'm doing pretty good. Good. You ready to play? Oh, yeah. So All then, right. Since this is episode 710, I'm going to play a song off my last album, off of Medication Recreation. This one's called As the Smoke Clears. Let's take my knowledge of cannabis, then add a touch of lyrical gold. Soon we join this magical beat, and this hell modern dice that we told. So sit back, relax, and pull out that bomb. Take a big dab, but don't hold it too long. Exit was slowly, and soon you will find you're in the right spot to just free your mind. And as the smoke clears, my pain's to wane. I got no fear. So if you feel me, then you know where this is going. Everybody dab it up, and let's keep talking. Then as the smoke clears, my pain's to wane. I got no fear. So if you feel me, then you know where this is going. Everybody dab it up, and let's keep talking. Everybody was dabbing Nails red hot like the sun And if you don't know where we're going You can't find us at the cup And as the smoke clears, my pain slips away and I got no fear So if you feel me then you know where this is going Everybody dab it up and let's keep talking and as the smoke clears, my pain slips away and I got no fear. So if you feel me, then you know where this is going. Everybody dab it up and let's keep talking. And as a mad dabber, you won't make it to this level. I take glob after glob, unless I'm not will be unsettled. No catch me down at courtside. National Dab Association, now it's time to get high. First place is what I'm taking. One dab, two dab, three, don't be mistaken. Try to keep up with me and you're bound to get faded. Ha, or you might just space it. Looks like that was stronger than you anticipated. <laughs> Did you forget what your name is when I said known as my dabber? Did you think that I was playing? Nah, that's all right, man. You can say it. You're higher than you've ever been. And man, that is tasty. And as the smoke clears, my pain's to win. I got no fear. So if you feel me, then you know where this is going. Everybody dab it up and let's keep talking. And as the smoke clears, my pain's to win. I got no fear. So if you feel me, then you know where this is going. Everybody dab it up and let's keep talking. Everybody was dabbing Nails red hot like the sun And if you don't know where we're going well, You can't find us at the cup And as the smoke clears my paints to away And I got no fear So if you feel me then you know where this is going Everybody dab it up and let's keep talking and as the smoke clears, my pain's to win. I got no fear. So if you feel me, then you know what this is going win. Everybody dab it up and let's keep talking. Yeah. And as the smoke clears, my pain's to win. I got no fear. So if you feel me, then you know what this is going win. Everybody dab it out and let's keep talking. Justin Bridges. Appreciate thank you, it. Justin. Welcome to the show, Captain. Oh, thank you, Paul. It's good to have you back. Hey, Casper. Hey, Casper. Welcome, viewers. If you are watching tonight, the 15th of November, 2013, you can call us at the number right there on the bottom of your screen. If you have a question about ending adult marijuana prohibition or restoring industrial health or helping medical marijuana patients, call us at 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. Captain Kirk, you have a couple of really fancy trophies here. Maybe we can get well, camera two to, to uh, close in on these. I have not seen this one, but I think I saw this one in, in Michigan, uh, Michigan uh, about two years ago, yes. maybe three. That was in 2011. I won my first cup there in Michigan with the uh, key lime cheesecake. Mm -hmm. And then the second cup I won uh, in, in Seattle. Seattle. And when was that? And that was the year before, well, that would have been in 2012. That was before they went nationally legal. Uh -huh. And then, uh, or completely legal, I guess you could say then. And yeah. I won that with a sugar-free Buckeye and a gingerbread cake truffle. Okay, so it was a 
truffle cake, is that right, or two separate It was things? two separate things. I, I wanted to showcase that there are stuff out there for folks that are diabetics. You know, there was uh -huh. a sugar-free cake truffle, and then there was another truffle, which was a, uh, well, the gingerbread cake truffles, which I was talking about, which is covered in white chocolate and then crushed with uh, pistachios, covered in that. I see. And each one contained about 55 milligrams of uh, THC. And here mm -hmm. recently, I've been going, I have multiple sclerosis real bad, and I've been trying to climb a uh, mountain there in Bend, Oregon. That, that volcanic uh, uh, that, peak right there in the center of town? That's correct, Pilot Butte. Pilot Butte. And it's about 900 feet up, and here recently, this week, I was just able to conquer it with no pain pills, um, using cannabis, you know, uh -huh. edibles. That is a nifty logo. It kind of reminds me of the Who logo there, Captain Kirk's Edibles. Well, I've had folks tell me it reminded me of the Pistons, but when I went with along with the logo, I was thinking Captain America. Ah, uh, I see. Captain I see. America came about, you know, shortly after, uh, you know, really came get, big after John F. Kennedy was We can killed. get the camera to focus in a little bit closer here on the medicinal product. Now, this is the Jolly Hasher. That's and correct. And it's a butterscotch. It's got 50 milligrams of THC. That's quite a bit, isn't it? That's correct. That's correct. And That's so got a full gram it's of a hybrid. decarboxylated hash in there. Uh huh. And then along with that, uh, we also do testing using uh, BHO, very clean BHO, uh -huh. making sure all of that's out of there. This, this edible right here. got an right expiration here. date of February next year. Correct. So Jolly, how long do they last? Jolly hashers go for about three months. Uh -huh. uh, as far as you know, they could last longer on the shelf life, but as far as I would consider them are, are three months shelf life. Now this one is uh, caramel, but it says about the same dose. That's correct. Also a and the, and the different flavors with this is like the caramel or the caramel, the uh, some of the coffee nut flavors. Those are good for folks to take in their coffee. They're able to go to work with these. Uh, they're not overly getting high. They're able to f perform their duties. Mm -hmm. and, and still work. So this says it is a chocolate pecan turtle. That is correct. Okay. And uh, it also has uh, two servings of 50 milligrams each. That's correct. Okay. So each chocolate. Each one there is milligrams. 50 milligrams. And that's about equivalent to smoking about three good joints. Okay. Well, this is something here I wanted to talk about, Paul. This this item here. You've got here, a little dip in there. This dip here the is lemon also ganja dip. We used off the the dip there was with the first uh, cup that I won with my cheesecake. This dip here contains RSO in it, and for folks back home in Michigan, and I've currently met someone here in Oregon, there are folks that use feeding tubes, you know, due to their diseases or whatever has happened to them, and RSO cannot go through the feeding tube without getting stuck or clogging up the feeding tube. Right. In order for patients We're to relieve that some, some ALS patients in South Korea. Yes. And, and with this dip here, they're able to run this through their feeding tube and not only get medication, but get some kind of food too. Uh -huh. But they don't get the flavor. Oh, well. Not through their feeding tube. It I can right describe it to them, you know. <laughs> All right. And then here is a sugar-free brownie. This is for the diabetic side. You know, uh -huh. I'm trying to showcase there's edibles out there for everyone. It's not just brownies anymore. There's more than just the sugar-free brownies for diabetics. There's diabetic chocolate, there's diabetic cakes. You can also do cooking with hams, turkeys, breads. It doesn't all have to be sugar items, folks. Now you started as a medical patient in Michigan. We met there That's correct. in Ann Arbor, Michigan a few years back, but you moved here to Oregon. Yes, I currently moved out here to the West Coast. I said after I won in Seattle, I would come back out here to the West Coast. Uh -huh. and. Uh, try and teach a few things and spread the importance of mandatory testing and, and why I believe in mandatory testing. And the reason I wanna go on that, for example, the quick story the other day, a lady came up to me and was really mad about my support for mandatory testing. We had a good talk once she was able to let me get a word in edgewise. And I told her my belief for mandatory testing was is I have a very good friend back there in Bend, Oregon, and Paul knows this lady too. And she uh, can't be around mold or mildew. So she was able to get any plant or medication from a caregiver or someone, and it had mold or mildew, and that wasn't tested, that person can get very, very sick. Mm -hmm. And for me as the person making this medication for them, I could be held responsible for that. Nor would I wanna give this to your grandmother or your child or, or even the younger kids, you know, that could be very sick. Mm -hmm. 
And um, so I know I made a donation of some herb to you a little earlier this year. Is some of this made with that? This is all made with your herb, Paul. All made with, with chocolate chunk, I believe, was the, the uh, chocolate one I chunk. Got well, that's good. Year. You know, here's this uh, thing from a Michigan magazine from uh, earlier this year, May Culture, and it has a little uh, review of your your medical products. I'm going to read that here. It says Cannabis Kirk's Jolly Hashers. 34 milligrams of THC is a lot of medicine. So I broke this little gem into pieces and dropped one into my coffee first thing in the morning. That was a great idea. In fact, I had one of the best mornings I can remember. My headache, muscle spasms, anxiety, and pain were deleted. Everything was humming. I kept up that dosage too, eating a piece or dropping it into tea or coffee about every two hours. This transparent, very tasty butterscotch candy has bits of hash inside that push right up through the top. Found at the Ann Arbor Health Collective and Depot Town Dispensary in Ypsilanti and tested at Iron Lads. The captain said he uses hybrid sativa and indica strains and clearly labels them as such. The only problem I found with using this medicine is that it was eventually gone. <laughs> that happens, doesn't it? And one more thing I wanted to tell you about, Paul, is the soap here. I have a friend soap. gentleman making this soap. It's a medicated soap. Zebra soap. Topical Glycerin soap. Glycerin-based soap combined with cannabis and lavender. Very good. And it uses the Rick Simpson oil in there. It's not one of those to where you just want to hop in the shower, put it on real quick, and jump out. You want to lather up, get the steam in there. Um, again, I've had a lot of back surgeries and with my MS, and I found out about 10 minutes in the steam. In fact, if you wanted to open one of these, go right ahead right and look at it. This has done me a lot of justice. Why don't you go okay. ahead and open that up. And that bar right there contains about two milligrams of Rick Simpson oil. I see. Okay. There's no secret dyes in there, perfumes, nothing like that, uh, which is, I really like it a lot. So just, uh, just bathe. Correct. We have some friends with psoriasis there in Bend that are currently using the soap. Their itchiness went down, their bumps and hives went down. Huh. And again, this is made by a good friend of mine named Ed. Uh -huh. And it's available there in Bend also. Nifty. And uh, so I'm really enjoying Bend, Oregon right now. And this is new to me out here out west. Things are definitely different mm -hmm. compared to Michigan here. Pricing's a difference. A lot cheaper here, right? A lot cheaper here. I read this week that Oregon's cannabis is the cheapest in the nation. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's why I came here. <laughs> All right. We have a couple phone calls standing by. Let's go ahead and take one of those calls. Welcome to the show, caller. Hello, caller. Hello? Yes. Hello. Hi. Um, um, thanks for taking my call tonight, Paul. You're welcome. Um, I uh, have a medical marijuana card, and last week I had um, cervical fusion with bone graft. And um, I have been looking online because obviously uh, cigarettes, uh, the nicotine in the cigarettes actually prohibit the healing process. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you had any information on marijuana because everything that I'm looking up online says not to do that, um, that it can definitely uh, prohibit healing. And I kind of don't believe that, but I was wondering your take on that. I think cannabis promotes healing. That's that's uh, true in many different ways. I haven't heard of it inhibiting healing in any way. Okay. You know, and, uh, can, uh, tobacco has nicotine, which is toxic. There's nothing toxic at all in cannabis. Okay. So what I'm reading then is probably just uh, garbage and... Speculation. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it, Paul. Have a great night. You're very welcome. Thank you. Casper, you've been quiet back there. we got a very interesting guest this evening. And I'm, I'm learning a lot about the edibles and the body lotion. It's very nice. Yeah, yeah. Let's take another one of these calls. Welcome to the show, caller. Thank you. Hey. Hi. I just uh, wanted to say my name is Thomas, and I'm the CEO of TopGradeMedical.com. And... We just launched a... Where are you located? We're located in Happy Valley, Oregon. Okay. And I just wanted to... I was uh, tweeted to watch you guys, and I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that we launched a global initiative for uh, a safer medicine uh, for people with depleting uh, immune systems. And I was 
listening to the gentleman on your gentleman's left in the white shirt, and I couldn't agree more with the mandatory testing and how important it is for people and that people actually can get sick off of molds and pesticides. And that was kind of my uh, drive to establish this website that we launched uh, earlier this evening. I see. Okay. Well, um, what's that website again? TopGradeMedical.com. Global All right. initiative. Well, we... Wish you the best of luck. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. We have another caller. Welcome to the show, caller. Hello. Hello. Hi, Paul. Hi, Casper. I Hi. wanted to ask Captain Kirk if he sells his product here in Portland and where. Well, actually, I do have it in Bend, Oregon at Garden Kings. And... Uh, Right now, I, I'm pretty much just trying to help out as many patients as I can, but it is available there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So just Gard in Bend right now. Just okay, in Bend at, at this time because I'm just one guy trying to do everything on my own. <laughs> okay, so Garden Kings is in Bend, not Portland. That is correct, ma'am. Okay. okay. But coming you, soon huh? to a dispensary near you. Okay, hopefully. Okay, thank you much. You're very welcome. It's very, I know... I wasn't able to give you enough to launch across the state. <laughs> it, was a, it was a pretty big bag. but uh, you, you helped me out quite a bit. And with that, Paul, you helped out a lot of patients also. That that's you, what we you do don't with even our know garden. About. And your Simpson oil, again, that the product that we were able to take from that and make into good, clean Simpson oil. You know, mm -hmm. again, knowing from your product what I started with, you know, it's tested, it's good, it's clean. And that's the important thing that I try and tell people that get in, you know, to maybe start making edibles and, and Pretty much anyone can cook out there, but finding a good quality cook that is starting with something quality, that's not just saying, well, I got this real cheap, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and cook with this. No, I, I disagree with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to put something into somebody else's body that I wouldn't put into mine or into your wife's or your children's or Casper or, or anyone else. And again, because I know this can come back on me. Yeah. And those are important things and people should be aware of what they're putting into their body as far as medicine. I agree. So I'm really looking forward to mandatory testing coming around. All right. Well, if you have a question or comment for us tonight, you can call us at that number there on your screen. It's 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. We have a film clip from the Expo Grow in the Basque Country in Spain. And this is a panel with uh, Arjun Roscom and Franco Lapo of The Greenhouse, one of the largest seed producers and uh, uh, coffee shops in Amsterdam. Uh, when I went to the Expo Grow, I was amazed about 50% of all the booths were seed producers. They're very popular over there. I'm on one side of the stage. On the other side of the stage is Julio Calzada. He's not speaking here, and when he speaks, he speaks in Spanish. So, but, but Arjun and I both spoke in English. They had translator headphones, so uh, people could understand the other languages, but, which was useful for me since I don't speak Spanish. But uh, the fellow who's not talking off to the other side from me, uh, Julio Calzada, is the drug czar of Uruguay. And Uruguay, down in South America, has become the first country to legalize the sale nationwide of cannabis and they're going to start marketing it for one dollar a gram which is a pretty good price if you ask me but uh, this is Aryan Roskam of the greenhouse and i think you'll enjoy this little clip we'll be back in just a moment The politics are not very involved in our case. Que las políticas no quieren reconocernos ninguno de los partidos políticos en España ni en ni en Países Bajos va a decir que queremos legalizar la, el cannabis. Entonces tenemos que buscar otras formas de llegar a nuestro fin. Hemos establecido esta organización en Países Bajos. El 30 de octubre vamos a tener una reunión grande para presentar nuestros planes para 
los Países Bajos. Y esperamos que esto se por... Well, you know, I know he spoke in English. I should have listened to it first, but uh, they had the, the translator there putting it in Spanish. Of course, it's in Spanish event. So uh, there you have it. So, Casper, tell yes. us how it's going. If you're just overwhelmed with your... I am. 24 hour we got a great network. little network that's growing and growing and growing, and we are getting more and more hosts on the network, and we are having a lot of fun listening to the message go out in Spanish and go out in French and uh, go out from our host in Canada and all around the world, and it's great to be able to be part of a growing community like that that's dedicated to ending prohibition, seeing to it that medication is given to people who can benefit from it without being criminals and to restore industrial hemp back to its rightful spot so in the farm So now you do community. your show five days a week I at 10 a.m. Pacific time or yes, one o'clock in the afternoon East Coast time. That's correct. Adjust your clocks accordingly. What other shows do you have running there? We now? got Tara Joyce on from midnight to 2 a.m. We got Andre Herman doing I Hemp Radio every Tuesday and Thursday at 6. We got Al Graham from Canada who's doing uh, the Pace Radio. We got uh, Carl Olson and Michael Krawitz and Marilyn Mathry and Al Byrne all have their own shows on Sundays. Timmy Tipton's also doing a, a program from Colorado on Sundays. LS Love is on Friday evenings and Saturday afternoons. And then, of course, we got Susan Polzel, who's doing every Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mike Bafari brings us Time for Hemp in Spanish on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And Friday mornings, we get a, a broadcast right out of Paris, France, giving us the latest news and updates in the marijuana movement. Who's your host in Paris? I can't pronounce his name. Okay. I have no idea. Yeah, my French fall, 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 fall is his name or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> my French pronunciation is <laughs> not very good. But it's fun to listen to the program, either. you know. Uh, I just call him Hey You, and he calls me Yes Sir, and it works <laughs> out. <laughs> I see, I see. But we have one thing in common. We love the ganja. It's a worldwide yeah. thing. You know, I... I've often said, you know, there are more marijuana smokers than there are Christians. There are more marijuana smokers than there are Muslims and Jews combined. We are the world's largest group out there, and we just have to realize our power and take charge of that. We have another caller, though. Welcome to the show, caller. Hello, caller. Hi. Hi. Yes, I am. He is. I'm not. <laughs> I, I called before. My name's Bunny. I just got my medical marijuana card, and um, I didn't want to smoke it because on the uh, the papers that they give you when you go into the clinic, they say do not smoke it. So I was chewing on the flowers, but I'm getting sores on my tongue from it, and it takes too long for the pain to be relieved. So I want to know... Uh, what I, I want to put it in my soups and my stews and my cooking, and I want to know what I should use, the flowers or the shake, and how much I should use or what. Well, Captain, this sounds like a question right up your alley here. Well, it depends on what you're making and how much you're making. I would suggest that if you're going to use the flour, for example, when I make a butter recipe or, or, or making my butter from scratch, I do believe that it needs an ounce of trim, an ounce of popcorn bud, and an ounce of bud. And the reason why I say that is because when you're using just bud, I don't know why I'm not a chemist, but I believe there is something in the trim and in the leaves. There's cannabinoids and endocannabinoids in there that we haven't discovered yet that provide those materials that you're needing for your pain. The relief. entourage effect of the whole plant-based medicine. The entire thing combined all That's together. What we call it now is the entourage effect. The entourage. So that's what I would use if you, if I was you. And if you're making a soup, you could start out. Again, I don't know how strong of, uh, uh, I don't know how much you use to whether you're using maybe a, a joint a day to some folks that use an ounce a day. But I would start out real, real slow. What was that? When I go in to pick up my medication, what should I tell the guy? I want because I, I want to tell him I'm using it for irritable bowel syndrome and I want to put it in my cooking. What what kind of things should I tell him I want because I'm kind of 
Well, that's something you can discuss so with you, what we would call a bud tender when you go into one of these places and let him know what your disease and your symptoms are and he can help you out. Now, let's go for an example of using the sativa. If I used a sativa, what would work for me or what would work for and you're MS. Casper and I have MS or what Paul has may not work. So what I'm saying is off that is I'm going to get a different effect as anyone in this room. So again, this is something that, you, that you're, you're gonna have to try and figure out. But are you looking for something to actually give you relief to where you can sit down and relax and give you peace and sleep because of the pain? Or are you looking for something to give you pain relief that you can go to work and operate and function in? Well, I don't work. I'm so disabled from also, I was in a class, so I got that pain too. Right. And I just, on a the walk, I can't eat anything. I, I, I would recommend that you try a vaporizer as well. A vaporizer, I think, would give you very quick relief. It's better than smoking. You don't have the cough associated. And so uh, that's one way. But you need to kind of experiment and see what works best for your condition. Because, you know, everybody has a different genetic makeup. And the way different medicines work for diff is different for different people and so what works for you might not work for uh, you know anyone else so you just kind of have to experiment and you might look for something that has more CBD in it and CBD is what gives you the pain relief of the marijuana compared to what the THC and the antispasmodic effect correct and the THC okay. is more as the psychoactive part and so you'd find more CBD in the leaf generally as well Okay, okay, great. Well, thank you so much, and I watch your show every week. It's a great show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Come on down to the studio sometime. You know we have a live studio audience if you can make it, but uh, well, we're you're welcome. It. We are at 2766 Northeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, right at the corner of MLK and Graham. So we're live here just about every Friday night. Not every Friday night, but just about every Friday night here at Portland Community Media. Not only are we oh, live great. and have a live audience, some of our audience is so high you're not sure if they are live or not. <laughs> All right. And I might suggest one more thing to you, young lady. You might check out some topical salves and lotions that are made or with soaps? cannabis or soaps. That are well, I've never seen any liner. other soaps. Have you seen any other cannabis-based soaps? Or is it I have, but I haven't seen one work as well as I've seen this soap here work. Uh-huh. All right. and, I, and I believe the RSO. this has got it really down Not very many well. many people would use RSO in a soap, I think. That's correct. All right. Because it costs a little bit more, but when you see the effects that this gives to people and gives them a chance to actually go to sleep at night or cure their psoriasis and sores so they can hug their loved one and they're not scratching and itching, that to yeah. me is more worth the price than the money it, that it costs to make it. So, And then there are those folks out there that can provide nice donations and, and give it to folks like me who are able to pass that on to the public out there at no cost. So thank Great. you. Great. Well, thank you You're so welcome. much. You're very welcome. Good Thanks night. for your call. You know, I'm able to do that because people come and visit our clinics and our clinics subsidize our gardens and our gardens are able to give away about 300 pounds of free medicine a year to many different people. So, uh, just got to thank the people who come to THCF Medical Clinics because you make it all possible. You're the ones who put Measure 80 on the ballot last year. And now that I brought that up, I've got to say that we have two initiatives that we're circulating. We've turned in just over 20,000 signatures now to the Oregon Secretary of State. Initiative 21 is a constitutional amendment that was just endorsed last night by the Re Oregon Republican Party Liberty Caucus and it would uh, put uh, two sentences into the Oregon Constitution's Bill of Rights. It says people can possess, use, and grow cannabis and its derivatives like this food and this soap, and that the, fed the, the state government can regulate it for public safety. Um, Initiative 22 is a revision of last year's Measure 80. Uh, we, we went to the big poll last November, got 47% of the vote statewide. Uh, we got 61% of the vote right here in Multnomah County. And so uh, we saw how that campaign went and we revised the initiative to make it more likely to win. So uh, recent polls have shown that uh, 
we're very likely to win the election next year with over 60 percent of likely Oregon voters ready to legalize marijuana. So we urge you to contact our office. Uh, you can go to our website, crrh.org, or our portal site, hemp.org, H-E-M-P.org. Come by our office at 2712 Northeast Sandy Boulevard, or give us a call at that number there on your screen. It's 503-235-4606. We have another little video clip we're going to run right now. Uh, this is uh, uh, a little video uh, uh, our... Uh, director found online the Department of Justice is okay with marijuana in Washington and Colorado. So we're going to run that now. Enjoy. It appears that we have victory in the war on drugs. No, we have not defeated the drugs. We have lost. But that's a good thing. I celebrate today. <laughs> Eric Holder announcing that the Department of Justice will not pursue the states of Colorado and Washington. He will not pursue them. Quote, the Department of Justice would, would allow the states to create a regime that would regulate and implement the ballot initiatives that legalize the use of marijuana for adults. Ladies and gentlemen, declared victory in Colorado and Washington. 48 states left to go. So... We're a long way away, I know that, I know that. But the fact that these measures were passed were enormous. I said at the time, I believe we're going to win, that we're gonna legalize marijuana, because this insanity has gone on long enough. It's been decade after decade of miserable failure on this war on drugs. And this is a huge step for the Justice Department to say, finally, and understand the Obama administration for five years has been relentless in its pursuit of states that had legalized it for medicinal purposes. This is, of course, for recreational purposes in Colorado and Washington. They had done more dispensary drug raids than any other administration. For them to finally back off and say no mas is a huge moment. It means that those laws will stand and we have begun to dismantle this insane war on drugs. Now, of course, they put in caveats into this. They had eight different qualifiers. I'm gonna read you the four most important ones. They said the distribution of marijuana to minors is, of course, still not allowed. And the Department of Justice will list as a priority to prosecute under these. Revenue from the sale of marijuana from going to criminal enterprises, gangs, and cartels. So if that happens, the Department of Justice is still uh, very much going to pursue that. The diversion of marijuana from states where it is legal under state law in some form to other states. That's basically a warning to Colorado and Washington. This better not spill outside of your border though I believe it will, and that they will go after him if it does, we'll see about that. And then finally, drug driving and the exacerbation of other adverse public health consequences associated with marijuana use. Now the last part of that sentence gives them a little bit of an out and some leeway for the Department of Justice to come back in and go, well, it had adverse health consequences we couldn't have expected, so we're now gonna change our mind and go after Colorado and Washington. But for the moment being, this is huge news, okay? Now, uh, one more uh, comment here. The official stressed, and this is the official making the statement, obviously, that the guidance was not optional and that prosecutors would no longer be allowed to use the sheer volume of sales or the for-profit status of an operation as triggers for prosecution. That, to me, is enormously important. Saying, look, this is not a polite suggestion to prosecutors across the country, because before federal prosecutors whether the Obama administration pushed forward or not, and oftentimes they did anyway, but would push forward on their own, even outside of what the Obama administration had authorized. So basically they're saying here to all the federal prosecutors across the country, this is not a suggestion, it is not optional. You lay off of Colorado and Washington. A monumental step. And all credit to the Obama administration for this decision <laughs> All right. Well, we got to thank the Young Turks for putting that out there. We have lifted it. We have uh, we stream online on ustream.com in video, and you can listen to the audio on Casper's Time for Hemp Network. Hi, we, Sasha. We have uh, a, a question from our ustream viewing audience. It says, "If Oregon votes to legalize cannabis in 2014, how much will adults be allowed to cultivate? And would a place like McMinniman's, a local?" 
uh, brew pub chain be able to sell herb. Uh, the amount that a person could cultivate under Initiative 21 is 24 plants and 24 ounces. So a person could grow 24 out plants and possess 24 ounces. And uh, McMinimans would be able to sell herb uh, if they uh, got the new license. Uh, Initiative 21 is a constitutional amendment that just ends marijuana prohibition. And so uh, uh, it doesn't really say how much can be cultivated, but it legalizes the cultivation. And so we can say that with a great deal of certainty. So uh, if you have a question for us tonight, gee, we got about five minutes left. You can call us at 503-288-4442. Can I say one more thing about edibles? Please. For that young lady that called in earlier, for folks that are just starting out with edibles and never had them and walking into a dispensary or such a club for your first time, go in looking for something kind of mild. Don't go looking in for the most potent thing out there because what's going to happen to you if you're not someone that's used to using this regularly and you go in and you take something that's 250 milligrams and you eat the whole thing, you know, it's Some not going to kill you. Nauseous. It, it can make you nauseous. I have it can seen make you patients sick. say that like RSO is just too much for them. Correct. It's just, you know, it uh, gets them way too high. And it can scare them away. Yeah. You know, from edibles. So if you go in, start with something. If you're finding something like this that's 50 milligrams of THC, take it, break it in half in quarters and start out slowly. And if you're on an empty stomach, you can expect anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes for it to 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 begin to activate on you. And maybe you. up to an hour and a half to get the full effect. Correct. And if you're on a full stomach, you can expect anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours before you even begin to feel it coming on to hit you. So those are things you, want, you might want to keep in mind when you're going in and you're looking for something. Just don't go look for the most potent thing out there because that's not what you're needing. You know, you can speak to your bud tender, ask them what you're looking for. If you're looking for something to go to sleep at night, of course you want an indica. You wouldn't want to pick a sativa. If yes, you're looking to go to work to during the day, the daytime. you wouldn't want to take an indica and go to work. It just wouldn't work out very well. So those are just some things you might want to keep in mind when you're going into a dispensary and you're looking at edibles. Again, speak with your knowledgeable bud tender there. Kind of discuss what your disease is that you have and, and, and learn to know them as they'll learn to know you. And this is where they can help dial in the strains that are specific that can help you in your disease, like for mine for multiple sclerosis or for someone with a a migraine would be a different strain so you know i love that term bud tender of course it's lifted from the term bartender but you know my buds are always very tender and <laughs> and raised with tender loving care so nice. i have to throw and that smoked in there. tenderly by your friends <laughs> that's right and patience so we have another call welcome to the show caller hi guys howdy Hello. um i'm curious if any of you can tell us how does our edible and our salve and all of that, how does that work into uh, the amount that we can have with our medicinal permits? You know, it is generally outside the scope of those medicinal permits because what they talk about in the permit is the amount of actual cannabis. So, for instance, one of these has 50 milligrams. So how much of that would make a gram? That would take, uh, take quite, a bit. quite a bit, quite a bit. So. Um, so what are you saying, Paul, that, that they um, aren't going to count, because I've got salves, and by the way, that lady that called, the salve is wonderful, and I've got salve, I've got edibles, I've got herb, you know, and, and I sometimes wonder what I would do. You know, when you're talking to a police officer, you don't, they can do whatever they really want to do and take it to the court. You can't really argue with them. All you can do is say yes, sir, no, sir, and try to explain things calmly and quietly. If they want to take it into court, that's where you make your argument. And then it comes down to how much cannabis is in there, I think, in terms of the actual uh, court case. But, you know, if you don't tell them, for instance, if they found this little candy sitting on the shelf, I don't think they'd know that it, or this bar of soap, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't even guess that there might be some cannabis in that soap or in your sap. So, okay, so I think it's, it's pretty fine. safe, but I would say, you know, there, there's no specific limits in the law currently, though I know that uh, the regulations that the Oregon Health Authority is promulgating is, are trying to address that subject. Okay, 
Thanks, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, we're about Bye -bye. out of time. I want to remind our viewers to help us put our initiatives on the ballot. That's the whole reason we started this show many years ago. And this is show number 710. And so uh, it's, we've been at it a while. We uh, need your help to put these initiatives on the ballot. So contact us at those numbers on your screen. I'm going to go right down this list of things here. This is Captain Kirk's first High Times Medical Cannabis Cup. And this is for your uh, Key Lime Cheesecake? Correct, in, in Detroit. In 2011. 11. And this one is another High Times Medical Cannabis Cup from Seattle. What was that for? September 2012 for a sugar-free Buckeye and a gingerbread cake truffle. We have our Cannabis Flame of Freedom. This is a little uh, flame here, a uh, very little flame right now, with a hemp twine wick and hemp oil. And uh, this shows the reason marijuana is illegal, primarily to stop uh, it from being used as an energy source. Boy, you closed in so well on that one. I'm going to have you close in on this one. This is a new addition to the even closer, like you did with that. To even closer. Is that as close as you get? Well, that's pretty close. This is an Eli Lilly product. It was a half ounce of cannabis hash was in this. This was from uh, the CL Lean Druggist in uh, La Crosse, Wisconsin. You can see that label there, Cannabis Indica. The little thing over here shows the Eli Lilly. Uh, it's a nifty little jar. I haven't really seen one like this. The lid has the druggist name on it. And this held a half ounce of hashish back in 1910 when it was used as a medicine. And so we also have Mr. Justin Bridges CD. We're down with about a minute left, Justin. You are organizing the Cannabis and Hemp Advocacy Tour. You want to tell our audience about that? Yeah, we're, uh, we're trying to help educate. Uh, we're going across the country, starting in San Francisco on January 24th, head south uh, through California, then east all the way over to Louisiana, playing everywhere between, uh, up through Oklahoma, through Colorado, and back to the West Coast, coming back through Oregon and, and in Seattle. And uh, we're helping to educate and try to raise funds to help end prohibition. Uh, and you're going to give 25% of the ticket sales go to um, marijuana prisoners of war exactly. to go on their commissary books. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very hey, much. Hey, I want to thank our viewers out there for watching. Thank you, Captain Kirk. Thank you for having Thank me. you, Casper. We'll be back next week and help us restore him. <laughs> Good night. Mr. Justin Bridges. Ganja, pretty one now. Educate to Medicaid and recreation. Medicine can do nothing quite like this.